Welcome to Sober Mentum today, where we discuss middle of the road drinking and how trying on an alcohol free lifestyle might just help you show up as a better version of yourself for your life, your loved ones, and everything that matters to you most. I am your host, Morgan Smith, and today's topic is three big fears about quitting drinking and why they are unfounded. But before we get started, If you've been questioning your drinking, which can be a very healthy thing to do, by the way, and you'd like to know where you stand on the alcohol drinker spectrum, click on the link in the description box below, and you can access your free info guide. Now, on to our topic. All right, so let's begin with uh, item number one, like out of the three big fears about quitting drinking. The first one that I find is, is quite common, and I wrestled with this myself in the past, and Uh, Lots of the clients that I speak with sort of uh, allude to this in in various different ways is essentially uh, the fear that you're just not going to be able to enjoy life as much without alcohol. And, you know, if you've gotten yourself to the point where you're drinking more than you want to and starting to have some negative ramifications in your life, uh, even if they're not devastating, um, but it's to the point where you're kind of questioning it, wanting to take a step back, more than likely... Alcohol has become a pretty prevalent part of uh, your socializing, you know, your weekends, probably holidays and vacations. And so you, know, you, you, uh, you have intertwined alcohol into all of these otherwise fun and enjoyable occasions in and of themselves. But very often we come to associate the enjoyment from those events and situations um, with alcohol, right? So we're sort of giving alcohol the credit for being the cause of the fun uh, or the enjoyment of these um, situations when in fact alcohol is really just along for the ride and so as much as that fear is perfectly understandable and you know you've gotten yourself to a point where you through social uh, psychological conditioning over time it's just become a part of your routine so the, the thought of unplugging from that is is um, something that's you know cause for some anxiety or some hesitation. So what I would like to do is just take a step back and let you know that um, there are reasons why that is an unfounded fear. First and foremost, these occasions, these different sorts of events and situations and circumstances, more than likely, before you were ever a drinker, you were able to participate in these, right? Parties, weddings, um, vacations, you know, other social interactions. Probably when you were younger, granted, if you started drinking in your late teens or early 20s, like most of us do, it might take a little effort to remember back that far. But uh, suffice it to say that you had fun, and and probably lots of it, in many of these situations and occasions without a drop of booze. Okay, so that's, that's point number one. So you didn't need it at that time. There was a point in your life when you didn't need it to have fun. Um, The second point I'll make, and I I make this point often in a lot of the episodes of the show and um, with a lot of the clients that I work with, and that is that statistically, if you look at the World Health Organization, um, you know, analysis of the amount of drinking that people do around the world, it's, it's close to half, a little less than half of the world's population either doesn't drink any alcohol at all or they drink less than once a month. So when you, if you add those two groups together, you end up with, I think it's around 45%, who um, drink so little that it almost doesn't matter, <laughs> or they drink not at all. And so I think it's safe to say most of these people are having pretty enjoyable um, you know, times and at, at the social occasions that they participate in and you know, other events of life, right? I mean, they're living their lives just like the rest of us doing all of the uh, important events and sort of hallmarks of a life well lived, just like the rest of us, uh, but without alcohol. So it's clearly, it's clearly not a requirement. And this is just an empirical fact. This isn't my opinion. It's that, you know, lots and lots of people don't drink. You didn't drink presumably at some point in your life. So if you get yourself conditioned to a place where you know, alcohol has been around for, you know, along for the ride, like I said, for so long, it it can seem daunting that I just won't enjoy life. Now I can, you know, on my, my last bullet point on this item is as a person who has myself now closing in on two years, um, uh, on my current sober vacation stretch, 
took several others before this particular run, you know, for anywhere from a few weeks to a couple of months off at a time. So have had lots of experience in the last few years with both time on and time off. And I can tell you that, honestly, I don't miss it. I really don't. So along those lines, I'm going to give you three examples that just happen to pop into my mind. They're just sort of random examples of where um, a situation that I experienced without alcohol, I clearly recognized after the fact that had alcohol been involved, or at least more alcohol, I would not have enjoyed that experience as much. And so this is basically counter to the fear that I will not enjoy life as much without alcohol. Okay. So first example is um, back when I was still, I, I, I'm closing in on two years now without any alcohol. I call it my sober vacation. So I've been on sober vacation for almost two years now. But I was taking sort of mini sober vacations, mini breaks before I started this one. And um, I happened to be on a, a break at the time of this first example. I was on vacation with my family and we were at this really nice, uh, it's like a campsite RV park place in Southern California. Our, our family, our, our, our extended family goes there uh, usually every summer for a week or so. Lots of fun things to do. But on this particular week, um, I was on a break from drinking. So I wasn't drinking. And so on the last morning before we were going to leave, um, normally in the past I would have been drinking the night before, right? So I would have been groggy in the morning. I would have been sleeping in. I would have been fighting <laughs> the sunrise, you know, and all the rest and, and kind of dragging through the morning because you're on vacation and you don't have to get up early and go to work so you can drink more, right? We're all familiar with that. But on this last morning, um, because I had not drank the night before, I got up early. I, 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 you know, woke up before sunrise. Family was still asleep in the little cottage that we were staying in. I thought, you know, I'm just gonna get up. I'm just gonna get up. So I got up, had some coffee, you know, took my little cup of coffee with me, and I went for a walk all around the grounds of this place. It's right on the water, and I got to see the sunrise. I got to sort of experience the peace and the quiet and the tranquility of that morning, walking around this place, and, you know just looking at the water, watching the sunrise, you know, it was just, it was a beautiful, peaceful moment. And at the time, um, because I was still sort of one foot in, one foot out with alcohol, I remember making a mental note that this is so much better. This is just so much easier. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't trying to shoehorn sobriety into my mind or into my life. I wasn't trying to force myself to think, yeah, this is better. It was just obvious. It was just, a superior <laughs> morning, a superior moment, the mental clarity, the alertness, because obviously I got better sleep because there was no alcohol involved. Anyway, so that was just one, one small example, and many could be given. But in that moment, I realized this sober morning is actually way better. <laughs> like, it's just not even close. Okay, so that's random example number one. Okay. Uh, random example number two um, occurred also probably around that same time when I was still sort of wrestling with my drinking. And my wife and I were invited over to um, her boss's house on a Saturday afternoon to have lunch. And a uh, real, real nice couple, wonderful people. And when he offered me something to drink before lunch, I said, sure, yeah, what do you got? And he had, he had you know, he's like, I got some beer. I said, great. Well, it turns out he had one, literally, he was, actually, he might have had two, because he had one and I had one. So let's say he had two cans of beer. They were, they were pretty strong beers. And so I had the, the one beer, <laughs> but I can remember thinking, like, this little split second of anxiety, panic. Well, there's only one. I'm only going to be able to have one, so should, would it be better to have none? No, of course not. No, that, that's crazy. So I'm going to have the one. And so I had the one beer and he had his one and, and then, um, you know, we were chatting and then we ate lunch and well, between only being one beer and with food in my stomach, the buzz wore off like that. And we proceeded to have a good solid, probably two hours worth of conversation with he and his wife. And we learned just so many things about them. They had very li interesting life experience and we shared about our kids and they shared about their kids and 
turns out that his wife grew up in a very close to where I grew up, and so we had some common things to chat about there. But um, you know, this by by this time, obviously, we're all entirely sober, and I can remember thinking after leaving that lunch, and and you know, over the next day or so, when I thought about it, I thought, you know, that conversation was actually way better when I had a clear head, a clear sober mind. Because number one, I could listen better, I could focus, I could concentrate, I could follow what each person was saying, I could offer my own contributions with a sharp <laughs> mind, and I also was able to remember a lot of the things we talked about afterwards, and I just realized, had I, had I kept knocking back a second, a third, a fourth beer over the course of that afternoon, it would have absolutely diminished the impact, the quality it would have just been kind of, I wouldn't say a blur, I wouldn't have gotten drunk, but it just wouldn't have been as memorable. And to this day, I remember it. And so, again, just, just a small, minute example that I'm giving you because, you know, life isn't always about the big occasions. Sometimes it's just about those small moments. Okay, and for the third and final example, uh, for this one, I'm going to reference a Super Bowl party that I attended uh, this was, I don't know, maybe a year or two ago now. Um, I guess maybe it was, I was, I think it was two Super Bowls ago. Uh, like most Americans, especially if you're a drinker, you know, Super Bowl is a day when um, you can be very easily prone <laughs> to going overboard with the booze. And I was no stranger to that. I mean, prior to that, most of the time, and I'm honestly not even a huge football fan or sports fan, but of course, I always watch the Super Bowl. And uh, I would easily put away probably a six pack of beer during a Super Bowl, you know. So by the, the halfway point and certainly toward the third and fourth quarter, I wasn't even really in tune to the game so much anymore. <laughs> um, but this particular occasion, um, it was with my wife's family and uh, lots of people there, a good sized group. And because there was no drinking involved, well, got to concentrate on a lot of the great food, got to actually concentrate on the game, and it happened to be a really exciting game that year. Um, got to have some pretty deep conversations with um, two of my brother-in-laws. We were talking about investing and some different strategies, and it was you know some exciting things happening in the market and with crypto at that time. So it was just um, it was just it was a really enjoyable experience and. Um, the great thing about it at the end of the event was I had an hour and a half drive to get home and <laughs> was easily able to hop in the car and drive home with a perfectly clear head. And uh, so, you know, again, just another sort of low-key example of how a perfectly great time was had without a drop of booze. And so just to encourage you, if you happen to be wrestling with this thought at all, this idea that if I were to stop drinking, if I were to remove alcohol from my life, things just aren't going to be as fun, you know, because alcohol just makes things so much better. It enhances all of these experiences. And I'm not knocking you if you think that way. Um, Lord knows society and all of the booze advertising everywhere we go all around us is constantly pushing that notion. And I certainly believed it too because it's external from that perspective culturally and from marketing and peer pressure and so forth but you've also conditioned yourself internally to think that but I'm just here to tell you from first-hand experience and I could probably list off many many more examples but it'll get boring after a while if I did that point being you really don't need alcohol these experiences are great in and of themselves and very often what you make of them and of course, in the beginning, the first couple of social occasions without alcohol, they can feel a little awkward because it can, can feel a little bit like something's missing. But in very short order, you get over that. Your brain rewires itself. Your subconscious mind sort of gets the memo that we're not doing this anymore. And then you're all good. Moving on to fear number two, which is something along these lines. What are other people going to think? If I quit drinking, if I stop drinking, even if it's temporarily, you can really sort of go down all these rabbit trails of, um, are people going to think less of me? Are people going to, you know, think that I had a problem with alcohol, right? That dreaded phrase. Um, are people going to think that I was a quote unquote alcoholic? 
and you know these can be really um, they can really hold us back. They can hold us back from doing something that's good for us and our own best interest. Stepping away from this habit because of fear that you know other people are going to think less of us and. And, and not only that, but that we might be making a decision that kind of goes against the grain a little bit, maybe, um, in the culture in which we live, uh, where alcohol, more than likely, if you're drinking too much, you're in a culture, you're living somewhere in the world where it's you know, pretty prevalent. And it's, it's totally understandable to have this sort of concern, right? Because human beings were tribal creatures. You know, we advanced as a species throughout the ages and graduated on into creating civilization by being members of close-knit tribes, right? You had to be in good standing with the tribe. You had to be contributing to it. You had to be sort of swimming, you know, swimming with the group to, uh, to survive even. And so to do something that sort of goes against the grain, goes against the, 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 the you know, prevailing wisdom of, of the group that you're in, it can feel awkward, and um, it's totally understandable. But at the end of the day, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share a couple things with you that will help maybe sort of assuage your fear a little bit on this front, that, that, that that's an unfounded fear, generally speaking. Okay, So the first, uh, I guess, item to help demonstrate that I think that's an unfounded fear is that more than likely... Most of the people uh, don't care. Most of the people in your life really don't care if you drink or not. And so if you take a break and you know, you're questioning who should I tell and should I tell anybody at all or you know, maybe I should just keep this a secret. And at the end of the day, first of all, you don't need to tell anyone. It's, it's your business. But to the extent that anybody does find out or notice, I'm just going to tell you right now, probably 99 out of 100 of those people don't care. You know, there, there may be a quick little side comment like, oh, cool, good for you, you know, or, oh, that's interesting. Or, you know, like nobody's going to nobody's gonna think that, oh, you're, you're such a loser because, <laughs> like, you became overly fond of alcohol and now you want to take a step back from it. It's just, you know, we tend to get wrapped up in worrying about what other people think of us, and most of the time other people are thinking about themselves anyway. And that's just the reality. But but the second point I want to make here is, and this one kind of surprised me, you will find that to the extent that people do have anything to say or do have any opinion, most of the time it's, it's, it's supportive. It's, oh, good for you. And, you know, like, like, hey, that's, that's a good decision. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. You know, how's it going? And, you know, just, just basically people can read between lines. I mean, obviously, if you're taking a break from drinking, there was a reason. And, you know, most of the time, it's sort of like if someone goes on a diet or something, right? Or is trying to quit smoking or whatever. I mean, generally speaking, most people are going to be supportive of you. And like I said, there may be that one, one jackass out of 100 uh, or maybe if you happen to have, you know, a lot of friends in your circle of friends that are a, a jackass type, you might get a couple people that make these kind of comments that are, you know, like, oh, oh, I didn't know you had a problem. Or, oh, what's wrong with you? You know, come on, you know, have a drink, whatever. There could be there could be some of that. But generally speaking, I have found, and, and, and a lot of the clients I work with share this with me, that, you know, they were surprised to, to discover the amount of support that they got from friends and loved ones. Um, and so I, I think that's just you know an, an example of a way to realize that it's it's not it's not something to really be fearful of, okay. And then the the, the third point I want to make on this is that the longer the longer you sustain your break from drinking, you know your your sober vacation as I call it, and 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 people who may have asked you about it in the very beginning and then you see them six months later a year later and oh you still you still how's that going you still not drinking you you may just be surprised that contrary to your fear that people are going to think less of you because of this you might just be surprised to find out in the long run that people actually respect you and that you're actually elevated in their eyes and even sometimes people will begin to confide in you, you know, seeing you as being kind of maybe a thought leader a little bit in this realm, 
sharing with you that maybe, you know, maybe I, I probably drink a little too much too. Like, I really, I really think that's great what you're doing. And, you know, it's funny is people just unsolicited sometimes start opening up about their own drinking or uh, maybe about the drinking of a loved one or a friend or family member kind of lamenting about this person that they care about is, is going too far and just saying, you know, that that's really great what you're doing. And anyway, so I just mentioned this to sort of point out that it can kind of come full circle in a, in a strange way that here I was so worried that other people were going to think less of me. And in the long run, you may just well be surprised that they actually respect you and maybe even admire you a little bit. I'm not saying everybody will, but <laughs> and I'm not saying that you should or shouldn't do something because of what other people's opinions are going to be. But I'm just here to tell you, again, because the point of this video is that, that these particular three fears, as powerful as they may feel, really are unfounded. That's been my experience and the experience of several others that I've talked to and worked with. So for our third and final of the three big fears, fear number three uh, of, of the thought or the idea of quitting drinking is the idea that, that I'm going to be quitting forever. That if I quit drinking, then I'm going to have to quit forever and if forever is such a long time. And what does that mean? Does that mean I can never drink again? Oh my gosh. So this can, this can hold people back. It can be a stumbling block that causes people to delay even embarking on a path of, you know, a break from drinking, a sober vacation, because of the thought of where is this going to end? And, 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 you know, I can't imagine not drinking ever again. Well, so let me, let me share why I think this fear is unfounded. First of all, what is forever anyway? <laughs> I mean, can we even conceive of the concept? I mean, we are finite creatures as humans. We mark things with time measurements of seconds and minutes and hours and days and months and years and so forth. So I think I skipped weeks there. But um, the point being, at the end of the day, what do we really have when it comes to the concept of time besides right now? That's all we really have because the past is instantaneously gone and the future, well, it's here and then it's gone again. I mean, well, it's like, it's just, you have now. That's what you have. You have now, and, and you can con control now. And you can't control the future, and you don't know what's coming, and none of us do, and you can get struck by a bolt of lightning tomorrow and be gone. So just, just I guess, if you're thinking about taking a break from alcohol, just don't, don't, worry, about, don't worry about the concept of forever because it's a really sort of mind-warping concept <laughs> to begin with. And just say, I'm just going to do this right now. I'm going to take a break right now. And, you know, when you get to the, the second day of that break and the third day of that break, well, you're still just right now. And I'm not drinking right now. And over the course of time, your mind can recalibrate you know, neurologically, psychologically, as you rack up more and more time away from alcohol. And you only, won't really need to worry about it. And, you know, there are some methodologies about stopping drinking, and I'm not going to name any of them. I'm not going to criticize anybody. But that just mandate, like, you must quit now and you must quit forever. And it's like, don't worry about that. Just take a step back and begin the process of removing alcohol from your life for a time if you think it's necessary, and presumably if you're watching this video, <laughs> it's an interesting topic to you. So more than likely, that's probably a good indicator that you could use a break. So just do that and don't don't get obsessed over, you know, like I, like I said earlier in the video, I'm, I'm closing it on two years. I don't count days. I don't know how many days I, I have days sober, so to speak. I don't even think of it in those terms. It's just, it's something that I used to do. It's something that I don't do anymore. I'm in this chapter now and quite honestly, and I have been asked, I've been asked a couple times, you know, do you think you'll ever drink again? And I honestly just say, you know, I know that if I do, I'll probably end up right back where I was in very short order. So I don't, I don't have any plans to do that because, <laughs> you know, there's a reason I did this. And presumably if you're still watching this video, there's a reason that you're thinking about doing this. So anyway, Concept forever is, is really difficult to comprehend to begin with. So 
just you know, my best advice is don't let that trip you up. Don't let worrying about the future, what might or might not happen, um, stop you from doing what's right for you right now with respect to this issue. And then tomorrow, you do it again right now. And then the next day, you do it again right now. <laughs> and you just put one foot in front of the other and keep going. And sooner, sooner or later, you will be able to have a clear mind to assess the situation as to whether you want to continue down this path. Um, my contention is as long as alcohol is still affecting you, whether neurologically, although that part re resettles and recalibrate, recalibrates fairly quickly, then it's the psychological part that can take you know weeks and months and sometimes years to unwind itself. But once you get to the point of pure crystal clarity, where you can look back and see what alcohol was or was not doing for you or to you, your life, your mind, your health, your sleep, your marriage, your career, your hobbies, just your productivity. Once you get that distance and that clarity, the concept of forever doesn't bother you anymore. You know, and, and these fears will be completely gone. They will have completely evaporated. And then now you can make very clear, rational, thoughtful, experience-based decisions about if I want to keep doing this or not. And that's a great place to be because it's no longer, your, your thinking and your decisions are no longer being influenced by alcohol. So with that said, those are the, th the three big fears and why uh, I think they're unfounded. And I hope this was helpful and useful to you. And uh, we'll catch you next time on Sobermentum today.